Hi there and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Richard and in this video I'm going to show you why I uh, like to designate a home airport for all of my airplanes. Um, the home airport in my mind is the airport you know the best. You know all the landmarks around it, you know all the um, frequencies for it, and you know where the other local airports are surrounding uh, your home airport. So you see the Cirrus jet here flying over its home airport, which is the Greenville Spartanburg International Airport, KGSP, near Greenville, South Carolina. And it's important to be able to recognize your airport from the air. In this case, I'm uh, on downwind, but I'm at, uh, I think, 2,000 feet. But it's easily recognizable because it's a single runway. It's a really long runway. And uh, there's lots of buildings and stuff on it. So I keep a list of uh, information about not only my home airport, but many local airports uh, nearby. And this is how I organize that list. And it's much easier to pull this up than go searching uh, for information about uh, an airport you want to fly to or how to get back home from one of the other local airports. And my definition of a local airport is a one hour flight, uh, depending upon the airplane, of course. And so a one hour flight uh, in the Cirrus jet is uh, uh, plus 200 miles. The other criteria I use for adding to this list for the Cirrus jet is the runway length needs to be uh, 5,000 feet or more. Uh, I could make that a little bit shorter, but it makes easier landing at uh, 5,000 feet. A key piece of information about any uh, local airport I'm going to fly to is uh, the closest nav aid. And you see in this list, uh, I use both NDBs and VORs. Uh, and how far it is away from that airport. In the two NDB cases, they're either an initial uh, approach fix or a final approach fix. I like using VORs to help me navigate because um, you can fly to a VOR DME fix, which may not be a GPS fix. And I can um, uh, look at a map and say, you know, I want to be 20 miles on this radial um, from a VOR to be 10 miles away from the uh, airport. And uh, so that's good. Um, the other thing a VOR does is uh, very often you can find information for the location of an airport in relation to its closest VOR. And then you can fly to that location directly over the field uh, turn downwind and, uh, and just do an overhead pattern. So the AOPA uh, website or Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association uh, website has a great deal of information about uh, nav aids in relationship to a uh, airport. And so what you see here is uh, the Donaldson Field uh, information from the AOPA website. And I use this a lot um, because sometimes the best nav aid is um, an NDB or a fix. Um, but mostly, you know, they're going to show NDBs and VORs on this. And uh, but NDBs are a great way to find uh, an airport. Uh, and this is the way you do that. The last thing I'm going to cover in this video is the most important. And that's knowing your landmarks uh, around your uh, home airport. So the first landmark is that blue ball on the upper right side of this uh, picture. And that is the end of the runway of the Greenville Spartanburg uh, International Airport, uh, where you take off on runway 22. And the second landmark is that purple arrow on the upper left. And it's pointing to Paris Mountain. Note that Paris Mountain is about 2,000 elevation, and that's the same altitude you fly at for a uh, pattern, uh, an overhead pattern uh, at G KGSP. The green arrow in the middle of the map is pointing to 
uh, the Greenville Downtown Airport, which is one of my favorite airports to land at. The red and the blue arrow at the bottom of the map are the Donaldson Center Airport and the um, Lake, Lake Contessie, just off the end of that airport runway. So as you approach uh, GSP from the east, you'll be flying down uh, Interstate 85, and you can see the airport is uh, just to the north of I-85. As you're crossing the runway, you can see Paris Mountain directly ahead of you, and it's a very good reference uh, for getting to the runway and crossing the runway and turning downwind. So as you cross the runway, you can see Paris Mountain behind the airspeed indicator of the HUD there. And where to roll out on downwind is when you see ID5 and off in the distance there, uh, you're heading right for the Donaldson Center Field runway. So there's Lake Contessie and the uh, Donaldson runway. So it's time to turn final uh, back to runway 04 of KGSP. So here you are rolled out on final and ready to land on runway 4 of KGSP. So when I was an instructor, I gave my students copies of photographs of the landmarks so they can recognize them looking forward without having to look all around and look for the airport. So landmarks are like instruments on the instrument panel that you know like the back of your hand and you can see where you are and adjust accordingly. So as you're starting out in X-Plane and you want to learn to fly it, you've got to understand the basics of what flying is about. And the items in this uh, video will help you do that by knowing and understanding where you are and where you want to go and how to get there. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos.